Hey guys, what's up? It's JR Cuber, and welcome to the next installment of my Cuboid tutorial series. In this video, I'll be showing you how to solve the 4x4x6 Cuboid. So the 4x4x6 is basically the next step up from the 4x4x5. So basically the way we're going to solve this is take all of the things that we learned with the 4x4x5 and expand on it with the things that we learned in the 3x3x5. Now since this is a shape-shifting puzzle, the first thing that we're going to do uh, is return the cube to its cuboid shape. From there we can basically solve the rest of it as a 4x4x5, but with some small modifications. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so now the cube is scrambled up, and the first thing that we're going to want to do is return the cube to its cuboid shape. And so we're going to be solving this just the same way that we did on the 3x3x5, except that was a 3x3 and this is now a 4x4. Now there's a couple ways you can do this. One thing that you definitely want to make sure to do is to get all of your centers uh, placed correctly. But when it comes to edges, the only ones that we really have to worry about are the ones that don't have any pieces that are sticking out. Uh, pieces like these that do have an extension on them uh, can be just can be paired with any other piece that has an extension as long as it as long as they pair up like these. As you can see, these two here are uh, paired up. They're not the same color, but they're paired. And this is acceptable because uh, we're just going to be breaking them up anyway uh, in the next part of the solve. However, it is a pretty good idea to just pair them with its proper color because it helps avoid a parity that could come uh, later on. Anyway, let's just go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with centers. I usually like to start with uh, red and orange because they're the ones that stick out. So I just like to do those first. We'll just get our orange bar here. I'm not really going to explain this super in depth because it's just a four by four and uh, you guys should know how to do that if you're attempting this puzzle. Um, so here is, oops, don't pop on me, thank you. All right. So there we go, we have our first two centers right here. Uh, now we can go ahead and just pair up the other ones. So here is yellow, we'll pair with yellow. And then these two yellows can be paired like that and be put in. And I wanna make sure this is actually in the right place. Uh, if yellow's here, that means white goes here. And what I'm trying to figure out is if white goes here, then let's see, it needs to be red, white, blue. So blue is the one that actually needs to go here in relation to yellow. So. I've already got a blue center there. Let's pair it with another blue center. Do this last one, uh, just like that. And there we have our blue in. And so now when we, if we put in uh, white, which should go there, just like that, our color scheme should be correct. Actually, wait a minute, no, white is uh, next to yellow. That's not right. So let's go ahead and replace it with uh, green. Now it should be good. So we have uh, red, white, blue. So that is the correct color scheme. That's definitely something you want to make sure to do. All right, so moving on, I'm going to go ahead and just pair all of the edges up correctly instead of just by shape. Um, even though they do get broken up uh, later on, it does make it a lot easier just in order to be able to see which piece goes with which other piece. All right, so this uh, piece here, we're just gonna be focusing on the outer edges, not these inner uh, centers here, at least for the extended ones. So as you can see, this piece can pair with this one here, and then we will bring it up into the top layer and replace it with an unsolved piece and then resolve or realign. Now for me, it's easier to just use the very most basic form of beginner's method uh, for four by four or reduction. Now, of course you don't have to do this, but it just makes it easier for me. Anyway, um, here is an edge, here is the orange and white edge. We can pair it with the other orange and white edge that's back here, just like that. Replace it with an unsolved pair, and then realign. Now here is yellow and orange, and the other yellow and orange is here. So what we can actually do is take this one and slice over, and then do an edge flip, and slice back. That solves that. Let's see, what else can we do? All right, we can do, um, green and red right here. So I'm just going to take this green piece or this green red piece and put, turn it to the back and then we can uh, pair it up like that, replace it with an unsolved edge, slice back. We can do this red and yellow with this red and yellow up here. So I'll put that in and slice over, uh, replace with an unsolved bar. 
we'll go ahead and pair up green, sorry, not green, uh, blue and red with blue and red here. Place it with our last unsolved bar, just like that. All right, uh, now I think we're just on to last four, and actually it looks like just last two. We've just got these two left here, and these are just the, uh, the regular edges. So we'll just solve these uh, the way we normally would on a four by four. All right, so uh, we're reduced down to a three by three, so we can solve it um, as such. Now, same rules apply for the three by three by uh, five. Only the, these middle pieces matter. So we can just go ahead and put any cross edges in. It just so happened that we got all orange ones there. But we do want to pay attention to where the middle pieces are going. So since this piece actually just goes across from it, and there's another uh, cross edge that's in the correct orientation above it, we can actually just turn this layer over and have that go in place. And so then we have, we can treat this as a bar right here and put in a blue and white, except that wasn't aligned. So uh, instead of using this bar, we'll just pretend this is the corner that goes with the edge and then just solve the F2L pair. Let's sort of see how that works. Um, and then here is white and green. We'll see if this just inserts easily like that. It doesn't, so we'll go ahead and use another corner to put it in the other way. And then final edge is right here. So it looks like it's going to go in like that. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use this as the corner and then just uh, twist the corner. So just like that. Now we can go ahead and do our OLL. And that will actually bring the cube back because PLL doesn't matter. All right, so here we go. We are back to a cube. You wanna make sure that you have your middle two layers completely done. This acts as our middle layer for the four by four by five that this has basically now become. So we're just going to be solving it just like that. Now, usually the first thing that we do is solve these centers, but as you can see, these are already done. So we're just gonna go ahead and move right into solving these uh, one by two center pairs. Um, so we've got a pair here and then another yellow piece um, that will go right here is here. So we're gonna go ahead and take this piece and make it opposite of this one. So we'll turn it up and turn it to the back. And now these are in their opposite places. So when we slice over, we get the bar. Now we're gonna wanna replace it with an unsolved bar. So that will come from right here. Turn it in and slice back. Anyway, so that bar is solved now. Uh, we'll go ahead and do, um, we'll go ahead and pair this blue piece with this blue piece up here. Uh, just by turning the blue piece over, we can make them opposite to each other. Uh, now I can already notice that if we slice over, we're not gonna have anything to pair it with. So we're just gonna go ahead and use this bar and turn it over, turn it in like that so we have something for when we slice. And then we can just use this. Just like that. Okay, so we just have three left, which means uh, this is actually a really lucky case. Basically what this lets us do is almost like when you have three pairs left in four by four and you can do all three of them at once. Uh, basically, I'll show you what I mean. So in order to do this, we're gonna go ahead and solve this white with this white which, right here, which means uh, this bar here can come into another layer. That way when we, uh, oops, let's see here. Yeah, that way, there we go. So now we have this bar and then we can replace it with this one. Now this should, yep. Okay, so we have all of our edges done. Uh, sorry, not edges, but center pairs, and we didn't have to do uh, the thing that we did in the last video where we would slice and then make sure the two layers are the same and slice back, uh, if you guys remember what I'm talking about. Anyway, the next thing that we can do from there is solve all of our edge pairs. Here is an edge, here's the other edge. We'll start with this pair here. So we'll make this pair uh, opposite to this one and then we'll pair the edge up and replace it with an unsolved piece just like that uh, so now we can do this one with this one right here and so yellow and red is the one we're going for and we'll make uh, the two pairs opposite to each other and then pair them up right there replace it with an unsolved edge right and then uh, fix it. Um, here's uh, an edge right here, white and red. Here's the other white and red. We'll make this one opposite and then make the pair. Um, let's see, okay, we do not have 
a free edge. So uh, since, all right, so yeah, we're down to three. So this is good. This is our last one. So we wanna make sure it's out of the way. Our last one besides the one that we're currently pairing. So then when we make the pair, uh, we can replace it with the unsolved one. And that solves all of our edges. So now all we have is our inner three by three by two right here and our outer three by three by two. So we're basically down to a three by three by five at this point. So let's go ahead and put in all of our cross pieces. Uh, here we need a white piece, which will come from right here. Put that in. And then blue, which we'll just take from up here. And then um, yellow. Now we'll go ahead and do our um, corners. Here's our first corner. Since that does create a parity, we definitely want to make sure not to rotate the puzzle, but just turn the bottom. Here we'll put in the next edge. And then the next one. And then the final one. All right, uh, so now onto the top layer. We have headlights right here, so we'll put them on the left and then corner flip these. And then uh, we will edge flip these to put the yellow piece in. Uh, so like adjacent edge swap. And then we will do opposite edge swap to put in this blue one. And that just leaves an adjacent edge swap. Now we do have parity, but we're not gonna deal with that right now. We'll deal with it at the end. Uh, let's go ahead and solve our outer three by three by two. So we'll go ahead and put in our uh, red green, red white, and red blue. Uh, now we definitely wanna make sure to keep that parity on the left side as to not mess it up further. We'll put in our corners, one there, one here. And then let's see, that one here. And then our final one here. Okay, so for the top layer, have headlights here, put them on the left, uh, corner swap those two. And then we will adjacent edge swap these. And adjacent edge swap these. All right, so now we're just left with parity. Uh, and this is a pretty simple parity. This is something that we wouldn't be able to solve on the 4x4x5 four by four by uh, or any of the other uh, odd layer cubes. But because we can slice through the middle, um, it makes it pretty easy. All we have to do is do our usually our usual parity algorithm, uh, just slicing through the very middle when we do our U's. So we'll just go ahead and do 3U, uh, R2, F2, 3U, 2U, F2, R2, 3U. And there we go, that solves the cube. Now there is another parity issue you can get. It looks like this. And you basically just solve this one exactly like you solve the other ones. So small u, r2, f2, small u, u2, uh, f2, r2, small u2, um, just like that. So that's really about all there is to it for solving the 4x4x6. Sorry if I did move a little bit fast in this tutorial, but I am assuming that you've seen my previous cuboid um, videos. So if you haven't seen them, I definitely recommend that you go and watch them if you're having trouble understanding some of the things in this video. If this was helpful to you, let me know. And if you are having trouble, definitely make sure to go back in the video and rewatch through the part that you don't understand. And if you still don't get it, then you can just leave a comment and I'm sure there will be someone in the comments who will be willing to help you out. Anyway, that's about it for my tutorial on the 4x4x6 cuboid. If you like this video, give it a like, and if you haven't already done so, like my Facebook page, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and of course subscribe. Thanks for watching guys, bye.